Congratulations! You have decided to do some videos, especially for your social media marketing for your business. I'm happy for you. And now that you are all motivated to create these amazing videos for your social media channels, there's two more things that I wanted to show you about, and that's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video e-tip. Hi, I'm Susan Friesen with eVision Media, and today's video e-tip is helping you get the best out of the videos that you're creating with the equipment that you have. And I'm gonna be talking about having the right lighting and having the right audio for your videos. Have you ever looked at a video and you just thought something was off about it? It was grainy, it was dark, the whites looked kind of yellowish or creamy colored. It was just fuzzy, you know, poor quality. That is an indicator that the lighting isn't all that good. And so when you have that disconnect, that feeling that something is off about that video, then it, what, is ha what is happening is that it's distracting your audience. And so they're more focused on why does that color look so weird as opposed to actually listening to what you have to say. Talking about listening, the other super important thing is your audio. Obviously there are things things that we can get away with because these are just social media videos. It's not as if it's a production studio quality video that you're going to be wanting to showcase on the homepage of your website. That's a whole different ball of wax and you would want to you know, incorporate a professional videographer th for that. I'm talking specifically about videos for your, for your social media account so that you can get yourself out there, showcase your business and build your brand exposure through the use of video. Now back to the audio, the audio is just as important as the lighting because if people can't hear what you're saying, then there's no point in having uh, any uh, video up, right? So let's go back to lighting for a second. Back when I worked at our local Cablevision studio, back then we had MSA Cable 3, shout out to the crew back then. And we had a studio that I was the first master control operator of that studio. So I learned tons about video production, lighting and audio, editing, you know, directing the whole nine yards. In a studio setting, there's typically three kinds of lighting that gets set up. And I'm gonna to describe to you what that lighting is and then I'll go into how you can, uh, you know, you set up your own system without having to invest in a ton of lighting. The first one is a backlight. A backlight would be a, light, a spotlight that would shine on the back of my head be, behind my head. So it would be kind of taking care of all the shadows that you're currently seeing behind me. As you can see right now, I don't have the best lighting. So you can see that there's shadows happening behind me. Now, if I had a backlight, that wouldn't be happening. So a backlight is one thing that we use in a studio. The other thing that you use in a studio is a fill light. A fill light has a, has a broader spectrum. It creates more of a wider range, a softer diffused light. Usually you see a, a, a fill light off to the side and it fills the whole space. And I have a light beside me right now that's kind of acting as my fill light. And then the final light that you would see in a studio setting is a key light. So a key light is more like a spotlight. It's a little bit more up front in front of you and it's shining directly on the subject. With those three lightings in mind, and of course in a bigger studio setting, there's lots more lights than that, but this is just keeping, keeping it basic for you. So in a, in, um, it, it, for us to try and emulate that, now right now I'm in my office and I have what, I, what I'm taking advantage of is lighting coming from my window. Now it happens to be a cloudy, darker day today. So that's why the overall ambiance isn't ideal, but take advantage of the window lighting wherever you can. Get yourself in front of the window lighting and use that as your fill light. Now one little side note is when I'm on location, uh, you know, obviously you're not gonna be hauling all of your lights with you, so find a window and stand in front of that window so that the camera is looking at you, but you're looking at the window, and that suffices often as enough lighting that you would need. That can be working as your fill light. The backlight, there's not much you can do about a backlight unless you happen to have an overhead light that's kind of shining above you. But you can use more fill lights or try to get a key light and, and use that as more of a spotlight, but I have a light sitting right here. You can kind of see it shining on my, on my penguins here. There's a little bit of a light there. I've got a light there and I've got a light up here too. And these are just lamps 
and so those are lights that I've, I've you know created to kind of bring the lighting up a bit as I said it's not ideal but it and it could be better and um, probably my next investment will be to buy proper lighting fill lighting especially so that I can get my lighting up a little bit better so give lighting a try lighting is super important the more lighting it is uh, the better even though it feels like the light is the, the room is already bright for you that doesn't mean that's going to translate well into the camera so make it as bright as you can without overdoing it right and um, and just another side note if you are outside try to avoid doing a video in the in the sunshine because the sunshine will actually cause too bright of a light on your face and it'll cause way too many shadows behind you too so a bright sunshine is actually not ideal unless you're looking at the window like the sunshine is outside and is bringing in lots of beautiful light in through the window that's fine but standing outside in the sunshine is not great so you actually want to be looking at more of a cloudier day if you're going to be doing your videos outside so let's move on to audio as you can see i'm wearing a, a lapel audio microphone right now it's hooked to my sweater hooked up into my iPhone and I'm using that for my audio and this is a lavalier mic quite low cost not a big deal to purchase and I find that the, these kind of microphones are much better than just using your phone microphone but that is another option for you to use is use the, the microphone that's in your phone like an iPhone or Android the time that you would be okay with using your microphone that's in your phone is if you were doing a selfie or doing a fairly close-up shot so that the microphone is close to your mouth. Uh, right now my camera is too far away. I would sound very echoey. It wouldn't sound very good. The other thing that you can use is a headset. For quite a while there before I got the lavalier mic, I would sit in front of my webcam at my desk and I had a headset that had a microphone attached to it and it wrapped around the back of my neck. And that actually worked really well. The microphone was well hidden with my long hair and, uh, and that sufficed beautifully for audio. But of course it wasn't very mobile. I couldn't use that with my smartphone, but it was, it was a great option to use for when I do my videos in front of my computer using my computer, um, my webcam. Then there's one more, one more kind of a microphone that you can use and that's the good old fashioned handheld microphone. Uh, you see people using those in interview situations where they're literally standing there holding a microphone. That's probably a little bit too over the top for the kinds of videos that we're talking about, but if you happen to have one laying around, that's perfectly acceptable as long as it can plug into whatever recording device that you're using. There you have it, your lighting and your audio. The final steps to having a great audio and lighting quality production video for your business. In a past e-tip, I did talk about the framing, so be sure to reference that video too to understand where to stand, zooming in and out, panning left and right, all that kind of fun stuff, and get the proper framing. And so at the end of the day, you want to avoid any kind of distraction or anything that will make people feel like, oh, what was that? We want 100% focus on what we're talking about in our talking head videos. Of course, I'm talking about a talking head video here, not uh, you know if you're gonna be out doing a, a, a reporting uh, you know at a live event or anything like that, right? And so that's it for today's e-tip. If you have any questions at all about videos and uh, social media, using videos for social media, please do leave a comment below. Show some love and like this video, leave a comment. I would love to hear your feedback if you found that these videos have been helpful for you. We've been focusing a lot on videos because video is the uh, you know a huge hit right now, something that I encourage all entrepreneurs and business owners to take advantage of. Do sign up for my newsletter as well. We'd send it out every Tuesday morning with a fresh new e-tip video for you to look at and also a brand new article that's written specifically to help entrepreneurs and business owners with their marketing for their business. And, uh, and sometimes we throw in a guest article about uh, another great topic that all business owners need to know about. So please uh, share the love, share the videos, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks, bye now.